でフルーツのインタビューを見ていただきましょう、まあ、今回のアルバム「ザ・マンドレイクプロジェクト」僕はねアルバム3枚続けて出るっていうふうに勘違いしてたんだよねこれはねコミックが3作こう連作で出るってことでちょっと間違って聞いてるところもあったりして、えー、僕もあれやなんて思っちゃったんだけどいずれにしても素晴らしいアルバムですねもう夏までぎっちりヨーロッパ南米のツアーが、えー、入っていまして、まあ、残念ながら日本公演の予定はちょっとなさそうですがまあやっぱりウィリアム・ブレイクっていうねあのイギリスの詩人にしてマジッツにして、えー、そしてアートの象徴的な人物がいるわけですけど、えー、ブルースは「ケミカル・ウェディング」なんてアルバム作ったりしてウィリアム・ブレイクへのねすごくこう感情に強い人なんですよさあ今回のアルバムはどういうアルバムなのかブルースが語ります I have been.、Uh, very well. I'm, I'm here, in,、uh, here in LA and、um, it's all going really good. I mean, everybody's really happy with the album、um, and the tour is selling out. And so, <laughs> well, it's great. まあ、ブルースは忙しく生きているのは大好きですけど、最近は本当にどういうことをやってたの、uh, Well, funnily enough, Uh, I have been very busy.、Uh, I've been trying to do、uh, less things, but more of them. <laughs> so, so、uh, you know, rather than try and do 10 things at once, just do two.、Uh, and so, in, in this case, it's been the album and also、uh, a three year project of a graphic novel,、uh, which they then. They don't depend on each other, they're independent of each other, but nevertheless, they share the same title.、Um, and、uh, there's some links between the, the, the one with the other, with the stories. So, yeah, so that's, that's been,、um, it's been a very, a very busy year of you know, mixing things.、Um, we, uh, also, we've been doing the,、um, the back catalog as well. So, we've just done,、uh, in fact,、uh, this week. Um, mixing the Atmos、uh, Dolby version of、uh, Skunk Works. We've remixed it, and we're going to be doing the same thing for all of our, my back catalog.、Uh, so, both the Picasso and you know, the, all, the, all the other albums. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on, and we're preparing for a tour. I mean, a big solo tour, 50, 50 shows nearly.、Um, and、uh, unfortunately, no Japan yet. <laughs> But,、uh, you know, um, and um, yeah, and then it's a, a, the rest of the year is、uh, busy with, with, with Maiden, and then we will be coming to Japan, so which is fantastic. Blues no shakini wa kanarazu ja nai desu ke domo, Chemical Wedding no nake de William Blake ni kite kurete itari. Ma konka no album demo Rain on the Grave ti de William Blake no shira tojo shita ch mashita. えやっぱりブルースにとってウィリアム・ブレイクっていうのはさまざまな創作のヒントになってるような気がするんですね創作活動でその辺どうですか um, uh, He's kind of like a bit of a he's a, he's a bit of a hero to me artistically、uh, He's very uncompromising He lives he, He's、uh, almost unique、uh, Yeah in fact not almost unique He, he is unique he's a,、um, I don't know of any other artist Who uh, combines uh, the esoteric, the spiritual,、uh, the, the physical ability to draw and, and also be poetic at the same time? An epic as well, epic, poetic, and, but also very,、uh, very witty, very pithy, very hard hitting as well. So he, he really is just astonishing, which is why. He's such an influence on, on pop culture from everybody from the doors. Well, where, the, where does that title come from? Where, William Blake, you know.、Um, so he, he has a big, he, and he spans all genres of music. So it's not, not just me. There's all kind of, loads of punk artists love Blake as well because he was uncompromising, you know,、uh, which meant sadly that he. Died with no money,、um, and everybody thought he was crazy when he was alive. But now, of course, you know, everybody thinks he's a genius, as do I. So I use him as inspiration. Chemical 
wedding. I mean, wow, I, I, um, I used chunks of his poetry as, as lyrics or as inspiration for lyrics. Um, I kind of interpreted some of his characters uh, that inhabit his epic poems. I interpreted them in some of the songs on Chemical Wedding. And when I was doing, for example, Rain on the Graves, um, well, and Afterglow of Ragnarok, Ryan Macfall, the director, a uh, huge William Blake fan, we share the same, you know, we love Blake, we love, like, Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, Hammer Horror, early Universal Horror, all that stuff. And um, so uh, it was obvious we were going to use some some Blake uh, Im imagery uh, in there. I mean, the song Rain on the Graves uh, was actually, the, the lyric for the chorus was written whilst I was in a graveyard um, staring at the grave of William Wordsworth, who was a romantic poet. Um, and he's buried in a little village called Grasmere in the Lake District. I was there for a wedding. So, um, I'm saying, you know, William Wordsworth is buried in, in the church. So I found the churchyard and there was his grave and it was very nice and neat and tidy. It wasn't like crazy, spooky, gothic or anything. Um, but it was sort of solemn and melancholy and all those things that you get in graveyards. And I just, I stood there for ages and it was raining. And I, I just looked at the rain hitting the gravestone. I, you think stupid things like, is he is he getting wet? Does he care? You know what 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 does that what does this mean? I don't. Know, it means something. I don't know what it means. I wrote down there is rain on the graves, and that was it. Put put it in my pocket, and it never came out again until we started writing this tune. Um, and uh, and then I I kind of took that one moment and turned it into a story. What if you walk into a graveyard where all these poets are buried and who do you meet? You meet the devil. And he says, hey, what are you doing here? Don't lie, because I'll know. And boom, and, and that's, that's the lyric, basically. That's the, uh, you know, what's your motivation for being here, you know? Um, and we put it in the context of like, uh, uh, the riff for that song, I was talking about early Fleetwood Mac, like Green, uh, Peter Green, early Fleetwood Mac, like Green Man Alishi and Oh Well and those sorts of tunes. Um, <clears throat> so um, and Roy dug that straight away because he, he's a big Peter Green fan. And uh, yeah, came up, came up with a riff. I was like, that's it. We've got it, you know. And the, and the, the, the crazy keyboard part um, da, 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 that insane keyboard that wasn't initially part of the song that was just a, something that was there that Mysteria had created as one of a, a range of options of different keyboards and the, the instant I heard it I was like oh my god and I went back to like the end of the 60s when there was a, a very eccentric uh, English singer called Screaming Lord Such who would be carried on stage in a coffin and would get out of the coffin and we just start screaming at people wearing a top hat, right? Um, early Alice Cooper, basically. Early Alice Cooper, early Arthur Brown. So I was getting all these images um, and, uh, and suddenly in comes this crazy sounding keyboard. I'm just like, oh my God, it's Screaming Lord Such. Let's, that's going to be really loud. Uh, and it's kind of like gothic and goofy and, you know, ironic, and it's great. I love it. Oh, Rusty, why don't you give some message to Japanese fans? Okay. Uh, I am so excited to be coming to Japan in the autumn, uh, obviously with Iron Maiden. But before that, uh, I'm bringing you the Mandrake Project. I hope you love it. I do, I'm incredibly proud of it. Um, if you like comics, uh, then you can check out the comic as well. Um, and 
it would be a dream come true to bring the Mandrake Band uh, or the House Band of Hell, if you like, from the video to uh, to Japan. And uh, but uh, let's let's see how let's see how you like the record first, and let's see what promoters say after that.